Hi, I'm Tail of Why Got Made and today we're making the 5 to 8 clock. This project wasn't planned at all, but I was going to attend to one of Rubio Monaco's Woodmaker Days and I was told to bring something with me that day to try out some of their products. I had this old clock on the wall and I thought it could use an upgrade. Since I didn't have a lot of time left, I kept the design pretty simple, so it's basically a wide out circle with a rabbit to fit a perch plywood piece. I glued together some pieces of oak I had laying in the shop and here I made a mistake. I wonder who sees the problem, so if you do, let me know in the comments below. After scraping off the excess glue I gave it a quick sanding and checked on flatness. I marked the circle on the oak piece, of course not by hand, I'm just making the line more visible here and cut out the circle with the jigsaw. Also I made sure to stay away of the marked line far enough so I can finish this with a more accurate method later on. When removing the cutoff piece this reveals my mistake I mentioned before. So basically I used oak pieces with a rabbit already made and without looking I thought they were half of the thickness of the oak but turns out they were only a third leaving this gap. To fill the gap I cut a piece of oak with matching end grain, put a bunch of glue on it and used the hammer to get it as deep as possible. Next I'm going to trim the edge for a perfect circle. I could use a router to do this but I wanted to try another method using the table saw. Basically you drill a hole in the middle for a screw to rotate and slowly cut away the excess material. The important thing here is to take your time and not to force anything. The nice thing of this method is you can do the same while your blade is at an angle. This way you can get to any chamfer you possibly want. I'm marking a line to where my chamfer can get and set my blade to something around 15 degrees and I crawl up until the cut reaches my marked line. I repeat the process for the other side, but this time I set my blade at an angle of 40 degrees. Although the dust in my table saw decided we went for a shy 39. Now the outer side of the oak circle is done, it's time to route the centerpiece and make the rabbit for the plywood piece. I routed a groove on the front side of the clock, flipped it around and routed a second groove with a smaller diameter giving a rabbit of 5mm deep, or for the American people out there, something around a fifth of an inch.
After sanding the edges and removing some tear out, I'm making the birch plywood circle for the center. When routing the circle, I don't go all the way through but only 5mm deep, so I can cut away the majority with a jigsaw and finish the shape with a flush trim bit. Since I'm using 15mm thick plywood, the clock spindle isn't sticking out far enough. So I'm making a recess for the clock mechanism to fit in and this might also prevent the mechanism from rotating on the plywood itself. At this point the pieces were ready for her finishing, which was done at the Rubio Monocot head office here in Belgium. I didn't film a lot that day because I didn't have much time, but I learned a lot and met some wonderful people. I actually fell in love with the product even more, so you'll definitely see me using it in the future. I used a mix of their charcoal and black oil to get the intense black result in combination with their warm yellowish oil called Sunflower. I tried using tape to prevent overlap, but the black oil did get through. And while you're watching me fix this issue by routing a V-shaped groove, let me explain what the yellow part of the clock actually is. So Wagon Mate is my side hustle where I can be creative and do woodwork. Since I still have a full time job, I'm only able to work in the evening from 5 o'clock till 8 o'clock. Besides the fact I like simple and minimalistic design, the yellow part represents the time I can spend at the shop and that's all I need to see. Here I'm routing some hour marks. I used paper tape to mark the length of the groove and carefully route along a straight piece as a guide. I love making these videos and I would like to keep doing this, so if you like this video and don't want to miss the next one, it would mean the world to me if you'd subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Maybe you even know someone else would love my videos and you could send them a DM and tell them about this channel. In any case, if you're still here at this point, thank you. After routing the V-grooves and some hour marks, I added a final coat of pure oil and it's time to assemble the clock back together. The plywood piece is kept in place with four small screws and some precision work on the clock hands later. This project is done. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.